this lecture, we're going to talk about the binomial theorem using Pascal's triangle. We're going to start with some motivation. So remember when you first learned to multiply polynomials together, if you did a plus b squared, you would foil that out and you'd get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Similarly, if we did a plus b cubed, we could multiply a plus b times a plus b times a plus b, and when all is said and done, we'd get a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. But as the power of a plus b increases, it takes a lot more longer for us to multiply these out by hand. And so we use what's called the binomial theorem. It gives us a formula that uh, simplifies the way that we can compute the expansion of a plus b to the nth power. So the binomial theorem says a plus b to the nth power equals c naught a to the n plus c1 a to the n minus 1b plus c2 a to the n minus 2b squared plus the terms continue to increase in that manner with a coefficient the power on a decreases and the power on b increases until we get to c n minus 1 times a times b to the n minus 1 and then finally c sub n times b to the n power. The c terms are called coefficients and in this lecture we're going to talk about finding those coefficients using Pascal's triangle. So we want to be able to create Pascal's triangle. We begin by placing a 1 at the top of the triangle. For each additional row, we're going to place 1s on the outside and we'll generate the inner numbers by adding the two numbers that are above the spot. So for our second row, we'll do 1s on the outside. There is no middle spot, so we'll just leave it with those 1s. For the third row, we do 1s on the outside. And then to find that middle part that's missing, that middle part that's missing right here, we're going to add the 1 and the 1 together above to get 2. For the next row, again, 1's on the outside. 1 plus 2 gives us 3, and 2 plus 1 gives us 3. Continuing to the next row, we have 1's on the outside. 1 plus 3 gives us 4. 3 plus 3 gives us 6. 3 plus 1 gives us 4. And we can continue to do this until we generate enough rows uh, to satisfy the problem that we're trying to work with. Now, typically a rule of thumb is that the second number in the row, so this, this set of numbers here, that represents the n or the power on your binomial. All right, so let's apply the binomial theorem. Let's do a few examples here. So remember the binomial theorem says a plus b to the n equals a series of coefficients a starts with the full power and then each term is reduced by 1 and b starts with a power of 0 and each subsequent term is increased by 1. So the way that I like to explain this is to create a table. So let's look at an example. x minus 1 to the fifth power. Our n is equal to 5, our a value is equal to x, and b is going to be negative 1. Okay? Since n is equal to 5, that means we need to use the row from Pascal's triangle that has 5 as the second entry for our coefficients. So that row was 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And again, I recommend that we create a table. So our table is going to have our coefficients. It's going to have our a terms and our b terms. So our coefficients from Pascal's triangle were 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. Our a term, we take the first term in our binomial, so that was x. We start with the full power of 5, and then each additional term, that power will decrease. So x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x, and 1. Right? So x to the 0 will give us 1. For our b term, that's the second term, we have negative 1. We start with the power of 0, so negative 1 to the 0 gives us 1. And then we increase the power with each additional term. So negative 1 to the 1, negative 1 squared, negative 1 cubed, negative 1 to the 4th, negative 1 to the 5th. All right, so once we have this table created, we can figure out the terms of our polynomial by multiplying across. So in our first column, or excuse me, first row, 1 times x to the 5th times 1 will give us x to the 5th. 5 times x to the 4th times negative 1 
would give us a negative 5x to the fourth. 10 times x cubed times negative 1 squared, which would be positive 1, gives us 10x cubed. 10 times x squared times negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, gives us a negative 10x squared. 5 times x times negative 1 to the fourth gives us 5x. And then 1 times negative 1 to the fifth gives us a negative 1. So these will be the terms of our expanded polynomial. If we write them out together, we can see that x minus 1 to the fifth equals x to the fifth minus 5x to the fourth plus 10x cubed minus 10x squared plus 5x minus 1. Let's do another example. So this time we want to do 2x plus 3 raised to the fifth power. So in this example, a is equal to 2x, b is equal to 3, and again n is equal to 5. We'll create our table, so c, a, and b. Again, n is equal to 5, so we'll use that, col that row from the Pascal's triangle that had 5 as a second entry. And so our c values will be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. Our a is 2x, and it starts with the full power in the first row. So 2x to the fifth, which gives us 32x to the fifth if we evaluate it. And then each additional row, that power is going to decrease. So in our second row, we'll get 2x to the fourth, which is 16x to the fourth. 2x cubed, which is 8x cubed. 2x quantity squared, which is 4x squared. 2x to the 1 power, which is 2x. And 2x to the 0, which is 1. Our b, the second term, is going to be a positive 3. And we'll start with the power of 0 on that. So 3 to the 0 is 1. And then each additional row, that power is going to go up. So 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 3 cubed is 27. 3 to the 4th is 81 and 3 to the 5th is 243. We'll multiply across our rows to find the different terms of our polynomial. So in our first row, 1 times 32x to the 5th times 1 gives us 32x to the 5th. 5 times 16x to the 4th times 3 should give us 240x to the 4th. 10 times 8x cubed times 9 gives us 720x cubed. 10 times 4x squared times 27 gives us 1080x squared. 5 times 2x times 81 gives us 810x. And finally, 1 times 1 times 243 gives us 243. So these will represent the terms of our expanded polynomial. And that means that 2x plus 3 to the fifth power is equal to 32x to the fifth plus 240x to the fourth plus 720x cubed, plus 1080x squared, plus 810x, plus 243. All right, for our next example, we want to figure out what u plus v to the seventh power is. So to expand this using the binomial theorem, again, we're going to start with a table with c, a, and b. Our a is u, our b is v, and this time n is equal to 7. Okay, so pause the video and take a few moments to figure out the next two rows of the, 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 the to figure out the rows of Pascal's triangle that would get you up to n equals seven. On the previous slide, we only went up to n equals six, so compute one more row to figure out what n equals seven would give us, and then resume the lecture. Okay, if you've completed Pascal's triangle for n equals seven, your coefficients should be 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. We take our first term a, which in this example is going to be equal to u. Again, it starts with the full power of 7, and then each additional term will decrease by 1. So u to the 7th, u to the 6th, u to the 5th, u to the 4th, u cubed, u squared, u and u to the 0, which is equal to 1. Then we take our b, which is going to be the second term, v. It starts with a power of 0 and then increases. So v to the 0 is 1, v, v squared, v cubed, v to the fourth, v to the fifth, 
v to the sixth and v to the seventh. We multiply across by our rows to get the terms of our polynomial. So we get u to the seventh, 7u to the sixth v, 21u to the fifth v squared, 35u to the fourth v cubed, 35u cubed v to the fourth, 21u squared v to the fifth, 7u v to the sixth, and v to the seventh. And then finally, we'll put those terms together in a sum to create the expansion of the, poly of the binomial. So u plus v to the seventh will equal u to the seventh plus 7u to the sixth v plus 21u to the fifth v squared plus 35u to the fourth v cubed plus 35u cubed v to the fourth plus 21u squared v to the fifth plus 7u v to the sixth plus v to the seventh. Okay, let's do another example. This time, we're going to change it up a little bit. The problem asks us to find the fourth term in the expansion x plus 2 raised to the sixth power. Our first term a is equal to x, the second term b is equal to 2, and our power this time is 6. We'll start by creating our table as before. So our coefficients come from the row on Pascal's triangle that has a 6 in the second position. So we have 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. Our first term x starts with a full power of 6, and then each additional term reduces by 1 until we get down to x to the 0, which is equal to 1. For our b terms, 2 will start with a power of 0, and then we'll increase until we get up to 2 to the 6th power. So we get 2 to the 0 is 1, 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, so on and so forth. Now this problem only asked us to find the fourth term in the expansion. So we don't need to multiply together each row, we just need to go down to the row that represents the fourth term. So that'll be down here, 20 times x cubed times 8. If we put that together, 20 times x cubed times 8, that's going to give us 160x cubed. So 160x cubed would be the fourth term in the expansion of x plus 2 to the sixth. For our final example, we want to find the coefficient of the x to the seventh term in the expansion of x minus 3 to the tenth power. Examining this problem, we now have an n of 10. Our first term a is equal to x, and our second term b is equal to negative 3. So as before, we're going to start by creating a table, but this problem asks things a little bit differently, so we may set this up a little bit different. So this asks us for the coefficient of the x to the seventh term. So I'm going to start with my x's. I'm going to look at this a column. I'm going to start with my x having the full power of 10, and I'm going to reduce it until I get to the x to the seventh term I'm looking for. Then I'm going to take the coefficients from Pascal's triangle. We haven't computed n equals 10 yet, so take a few minutes and figure out what that, what that row of the triangle would be. And we're going to write down the coefficients to match up with the column that has our a over here. So those coefficients from Pascal's triangle will be 1, 10, 45, and 120. Finally, we'll take our b term of negative 3, start with a power of 0, and increase until we match. So the part of the table that has the x to the seventh term is right here. We have 120 times x to the seventh times negative 27. If we multiply that together, we'll get negative 3,240 x to the seventh power. Now the problem only asks for the coefficient, so we're just going to take that number from the front, and the answer to this problem will be negative 3,240.